It has been five years since the dust settled from the waiting list death scandal involving certain VA hospitals. In 2016, President Trump campaigned to fix it. Well, tonight, we take a closer look at one of his reforms. That's just a phone call away to a center located right here in West Virginia. Come on. This is where Jennifer Stiltner spends her time on a good day. This is my mess right now. I've got some things that I've been working on. Making jewelry. And they come apart. Meticulously threading bead after bead. Trying to keep things together. It's actually her sanctuary. Sometimes I just, I've had such a bad day, I just come in here and spend time and not even really think about anything. Her safe haven to help her cope with chronic pain after a crash with an 18-wheeler five years ago. It was bad. And more recently, having to deal with a VA hospital in Huntington after a fall a few months ago. They did the x-rays and whatnot, and then they decided that they didn't see anything, so they sent me home. With an arthroscopic boot. I tell them I fell, I hit my neck, I hit my head. My foot's broken. And they want to talk about my gut issues. And I tell them that's not why I'm here. She says the pain got worse. It was going to be a while before a VA specialist could see her again. That's important. And after a private doctor found her foot was fractured, she felt the VA let her down. Nobody listened. And nobody cared. Jennifer wanted answers. So she called the White House Veterans Hotline. Good afternoon. Thank you for calling the White House VA hotline. Manned mostly by veterans like Dave Tisch, 24 hours a day, every day, in Shepherdstown, West Virginia. It's a very rewarding work to be able to help out veterans that are in need and be able to get them moved into the right directions uh, to get the assistance that they uh, want. The Veterans Hotline is part of President Trump's 10-point plan to reform the VA after numerous documented reports of veteran deaths because of long waiting lists and insufficient, inappropriate care. These are like the most incredible people we have in our country as far as I'm concerned, and they have not been taken care of properly. Jennifer called the hotline on a Friday, and by Monday, she was surprised to get a phone call from the VA. And she was a little surprised that uh, she had a message on her voicemail from the White House about me. And all I told her was, at least now, I have your attention. That attention turned out to be life-saving. It led to new medical testing that found leaks in Jennifer's major arteries, which are now being treated. Had I not called, you know, I could not be talking to you right now and not looking into get helping other veterans and getting them the care that they need as well. It's very rewarding to be able to know that we have an opportunity to play a role in so many veterans' lives. Come baby. Jennifer says the hotline gave her way more comfort and was much more precious than any jewelry she could make. Yes, very much so. At the very least, it was someone who listened, and at the most, someone who cared. See, I helped my mommy. We did reach out to the VA in Huntington about Jennifer Stiltner's case, and they responded this way. They said, quote, privacy laws prevent us from commenting on the care of specific patients, but we have reached out to the veteran directly to address her concerns. So, Pat, is there any way to really track the success rate of the hotline? Yeah, veterans groups, though, they say the results are mixed, but they do say veterans are getting to talk to someone and who will listen and document their problems. And it's not just questions about health care. I'll have more on that next hour. And we put more information about the veterans hotline, including the phone number, on our website, wowktv.com. Just look for my story in special reports. So important.